Today, I want to talk to you about DevOps in regulated environment, in safety critical environments, you know, the ones where you, it's not enough to just do something, but you also need to explain it to somebody who will scrutinize it. Um, and if you know anything about safety critical um, regulations, for example, you will probably have noticed that they they, they are written in a way that kind of assumes a waterfall model. So you have to start with a letter of intent, I think, and then you have to go and provide a design. And then you have to provide a specification. And then you have to actually like code it and then you have to test it. That's kind of like it how it works right and oh yeah and then and then of course you invite the the um, assessors and they will have a look at it and hopefully they will be happy <sighs> well that's all well and good but that's you know that is your classical waterfall process right and how does that apply to an agile way of working to a devops way of working and the answer of course is at first glance it doesn't but then again, it's not actually true that the regulators expect you to work this way. This is just sort of their initial mental model. But what they care about is this last bit here. This last bit where they come in and inspect. And there is nothing wrong, as far as they are concerned, with creating the documents beforehand, even many times beforehand. So in other words, you can do the thing that Agile would like you to do, which is not this long drawn out waterfall process, and instead do it iteratively. You know, you make an iteration, and yes, of course it's not complete, and you generate a set of documents. And you make the next iteration, and you generate a set of documents. And you make the next iteration, and you generate a set of documents. And of course, every time you do an iteration, the functionality will grow, but also the the safety relevant implementation, the uh, regulation relevant implementation. And then eventually at some point, you take the generated safety documentation, regulatory document, documentation, whatever, and you present it to the assessors and hopefully they will be very happy. But if they aren't, like if they say, oh, you know, this something's missing, something's not quite the way we like it. Well, no biggie, right? You just do another iteration, generate another set of documents. Isn't that nice? All of a sudden, all of this sort of scariness and riskiness gets taken out of the regulatory process because it's a matter of course. You can do it as often as you like, essentially. And what's more, you can even invite your assessors beforehand. Like maybe in this stage, you can already invite them and say, would you care to take a look at what we've created so far? How do you like it? Is this going in the direction you want? And you're in the position to make changes earlier before they become costly and risky and heavyweight. And also, dare I say, you'll make the assessors very happy because they don't have to come in at the last second and there's a lot of pressure for them to approve things. They can come in, look at it and say, yeah, this, you know, this looks really nice. If you just keep going this way, we'll have no trouble at all. And this is, for example, the way that, that Apple does it. They um, have set themselves up in such a way that the medical compliance that they need uh, for, the, for the Apple Watch to be accepted as a medical device they do that on a monthly basis. They just iterate monthly on the entire uh, acceptance process. And in a sense, regardless of whether they quote unquote ship, in other words, um, present it to the regulators, but they set themselves up to be able to do that on an iterative basis. And that takes all of the sting out of those processes, doesn't it? So in other words, yet again, iterative development is just a good idea, regardless of what you're doing, and how exactly you're doing it, as long as you iterate, you're keeping your risk down. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters, isn't it? 
See you next time.